Welcome back to Keyframe Academy. There's big news in the animation world. Rubber Hose 3 launched just about a month ago. If you haven't already heard, I'm sure most of you have, and it is loaded with exciting new updates and features. Now, Jake Bartlett over at Battle Axe has created a fantastic and detailed video about all these new features and updates for Rubber Hose 3. However, that video is nearly 50 minutes long, and because I've had my hands on Rubber Hose 3 for a couple months now, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to do kind of a speedy rundown of all the new features so that you can get an idea of whether or not it's worth the upgrade or uh, whether or not you should switch to Rubber Hose 3. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna share my own personal thoughts on Rubber Hose 3 and I'm gonna reveal whether or not these new features were enough to convince me to switch. Okay, so first up, let's just talk about the many improvements to Rubber Hose 3. Rubber Hose 3 has a completely revamped UI. It's still broken up into the different sections, but now there's new sections like this new power section, and that section has a few new goodies inside that we will go over in just a moment. Let's talk about Rubber Rig. Rubber Rig has been entirely updated and it's way better in Rubber Hose 3. If you know how Rubber Rig worked in Rubber Hose 2, you, like me, might also be suffering from night terrors. Rubber Rig used to work by placing the joints in a fixed location in your composition, right down the middle, and then you had to move your artwork around to fit where those joints were placed. It just was a really ineffective way to work. In Rubber Hose 3, Rubber Rig works by simply rigging your artwork together according to a parented chain of layers. And a little tip here if you're going to use Rubber Rig is to set your realism to 100% after everything's rigged up. Otherwise, when you start bending your limb, it will kind of get shorter and then your artwork will stop to it will start to not align with the joints correctly. One downside to this is that you end up with potentially eight layers for each limb, and with four limbs, that's a quite a stacked timeline. Rubber hose itself has been reworked under the hood and is no longer based off of the Polystar for creating a limb. That was a clever way to kind of create this faux IK. The new version has some new features that are made possible by this kind of rework under the hood, and the thing you need to know about it though is that the user experience is very similar to the old rubber hose. So if you're a veteran rubber hose user, you'll be right at home with rubber hose in terms of your user experience. Uh, next is auto flop. There have been some updates and improvements to the way auto flop works. Um, it works pretty much the same, but now it can mimic a sort of foreshortening effect when the limb is bent across the body, when it crosses from one side to the other, creates this little foreshortening effect. Here is a comparison of the old auto flop versus the new auto flop. Now, when it comes to presets, there are now two types of presets. There are style presets, which change the look of your limb, and then there are bend presets. We'll talk a little bit more about bend presets in just a moment. So those are a few of the improvements to Rubber Hose 3. Let's talk about the brand spanking new features of Rubber Hose 3. Of the new updates that have come, I think the most exciting is the ability to add bends to your limbs. The first thing I thought of when first learning about these multi-bend limbs was for creating fingers. For a long time, I've been exploring the best way to animate fingers and I've never quite found something that works and this is the closest I've come to finding a solution that I'm satisfied with and that's relatively easy to set up. Now, I've actually used Rubber Hose 3 to create a finger animation for a video on this channel a few months back. Of course, back then I didn't really talk about it because it wasn't out of beta yet, but you can reverse the direction of each bend independently to create a more complex limb, and you can use this to even do kind of like the hind legs of the dog. 
Um, and that's where these bend presets come in. I mentioned a second ago that there are these bend presets. Well, one of those is the dog leg, which applies to just the bend and doesn't change the appearance of your limb. So just a moment ago, I talked about with the new rubber rig, the one downside is you'll end up with potentially eight layers per limb. Well, one way to solve all the different layers of your character is to use essential properties to extract the layers you use to control your character and leave all the art layers nested in the composition. This feature, new in Rubberhose 3, is very similar to Duick's Extract button, which I've detailed in previous videos, but in case you haven't seen my past videos, you should go watch those. Extracting controllers using essential properties can be handy for two reasons. One, you can clean up your timeline by only having the controllers and the layers in your timeline that you use to control your character with. And two, that means you can create one rig and then reuse that rig as many times as you want to create as many unique animations as you want with that original rig. With Rubber Hose 3, there are two new ways you can customize your limbs. The first one is bones. Now, if you've ever used Duick, then you'll be familiar with bones. In Duick, you create your character by parenting a bunch of art layers, whether that be illustrator layers, shape layers, or Photoshop layers, to a skeleton or bones. With rubber hose, bones serve a similar purpose, although you don't start out with bones, but rather you create bones from your rubber hose in the other direction, and then you can parent art layers to those bones. This is actually how the rubber rig works. Bones are great for when you want art layers to squash and stretch with your limb, as anything parented to the bones will inherit the scale of the bones. Now there is an additional method to parenting artwork to your rubber hose, and that is parent to hose. This gives you yet another way to add detail to your rig by parenting the layers to the limb. You can adjust where, the where on the limb the layer is fixed to by sliding it up and down the limb. The advantage of this method is that while the art layer is parented and will move with your hose, it will not stretch with the limb. And with that, that's a brief summary of all the updates to rubber hose. If I miss anything, let me know in the comment section below. And like I said in the beginning, if you want a detailed overview, I do recommend you go check out Jake's video on his channel, which is a very thorough walkthrough, almost tutorial, of everything new in Rubber Hose. Now, I wanna take a moment before we close out this video to bookend it with some of my thoughts and initial impressions on Rubber Hose 3. If you've been a subscriber, and if not, hit that subscribe button, you are most likely abundantly aware that I'm a huge fan of Limber. So the big question is, are these updates to Rubber Hose 3 enough for it to dethrone Limber as my tool of choice for character animation? And the short answer and the frank answer is no, it's not. But here's a few reasons why. First, Although these updates to the customization of, of Rubber Hose limbs are a very welcome update, Rubber Hose 3 isn't really introducing anything new to the table on that front per se. In other words, if you're a loyal Rubber Hose user, then these updates are new and exciting, but if you're like me, you've long since made the jump to other tools to do the kind of customizations that you can now do with Rubber Hose 3, and the implementation, in my opinion, isn't the most ideal. The bigger deal breaker for me is that Rubber Hose 3 does not have FK. I've explained in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to in the description so you can go watch it. That video is about why I think FK is an essential part of character animation, as essential as IK. So not having it as an option feels like an unnecessary compromise. With that being said, 
Adam has very graciously gifted me a copy of Rubber Hose 3 because I participated in the beta group, but honestly, he didn't have to do that. Adam, by the way, is the founder of Battle Axe, creator of Rubber Hose. Uh, honestly, he didn't have to do that because I probably would have bought it anyway. One, because this is my YouTube channel and part of this channel is exploring these tools, so I would have to buy it to kind of use it, get my ideas, my thoughts around it. But two, I am really intrigued by the multi-joint feature. That is something that is truly unique to rubber hose and is, and, and there is, in my opinion, some interesting potential with that. Um, but that's just my take. Is it enough to make you switch? Let me know in the comments below. If you found that this video was insightful or helpful in making your decision, hit that thumbs up button, that like button. It really does help me in the algorithm. And if you want more content like this in the future, make sure you're subscribed, turn on that bell notification, yada, yada, yada. You know how YouTube works. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.